So, you know, I'm often struck with this sort of absurd belief slash, I don't know, whatever, that, I don't know, God or the universe or whatever is just toying with me. Although, generally, when I am inclined to think that it's God, I prefer to think that it's what I need to experience to bring me to whatever the truth is. But I've noticed, you know, when I freak out the most is when I get what I, not what I want, but, you know, kind of what some part of me wants and what I expect. Like, a few days ago, I super freaked out and got really pissed at some people from my life, which I'm always a little bit mad at, but I normally can just forget about it. And the very next day, the Biden administration reversed the trans policy and China threatened Taiwan again. And the border, border skirmish between China and India escalated again. So it's like the best way for me to advance what some part of me thinks I want, which is to join the military, is to freak out and get really upset And it sometimes feels almost as if, like, I don't know, the world's future is dependent on me staying miserable. If I ever get motivated, and especially if I ever have something that makes me feel like I should move on from that desire. That's when things will, you know, go to shit in a hurry. I don't know. I'm still convinced that China is going to end up being more or less the aggressor. With India, there's some ambiguity, but with Taiwan and Japan and the Philippines and really, at the end of the day, all of those are on some little proxies for the United States. Well, Actually, that's not totally true. They're places where China would like to exert hegemony. And the only reason that they can't is the United States. And I don't know. Some part of them is just willing to go to war with us for reasons I've mentioned a bazillion times. And it's like, would they really do it? Would they really throw the last 30 years of relative peace and some of the last 75, 80 years of relative peace down the drain just to say fuck you to us? I don't know. But some part of me obviously thinks they would. You'll never see a situation where the United States is the aggressor against a country like China. As much as we've done some shitty things, and as much as we've done some stupid things, we generally don't things, do things that are that stupid and that shitty. We tend to, you know, I mean, putting it negatively, you know, and because I've generally opposed most of the wars that my country has fought, during my lifetime, we generally tend to pick on people that are not even close to our own size. Sometimes appropriately, I think the interventions in Afghanistan made sense. Uh, obviously, Iraq was just stupid. Of course, if you really want to get into it, a lot of those, like terrorist organizations were really based in a mixture of Afghanistan and Pakistan and in the lawless parts of both countries, but where the Pakistani government wasn't willing to go after them. Um, but 
you know, it's not like Pakistan is the bad guy. You know, they just don't necessarily have control of their whole country. And also their government is inherently unstable, um, which is not the United States fault, but it is Great Britain's. It's like when Great Britain was creating India and uh, what was originally East and West Pakistan, they intentionally created a divided country because they didn't want to create a potential economic competitor and adversary, which is pretty fucked up. Um, people like Gandhi wanted the country of India to be united. Um, various powers that be in Great Britain did not want that for a multitude of political and economic reasons. And then they also intentionally created a country of Pakistan that would be, you know, divided between what is now Pakistan and what is now Bangladesh, um, specifically so that they would not become too powerful. Uh, all pretty fucked up. Anyways. Long story short. I don't know. Anytime I freak out and I'm truly like on the brink of like I just want to quit and I have no more desire to join the US military that's when my opportunity to do it further advances. Anytime I don't know. That's why I've often thought to myself that poetic nature of the fact that if I ever have something else to live for that's precisely when war will break out so you know maybe I'm saving the world by staying miserable I don't think so though. I think God is just trying to remind me that war is hell and although it might end up being necessary because if human selfishness and it might be necessary for me to participate in it it should not be by embracing the part of myself that I am very much not proud of because there's a part of myself that is unbelievably balls to the wall violent and aggressive and like stab and I'm not proud of that my, part of myself that it might be some aspect of what's necessary but uh, U.S. Marine Corps, take this as my application. <sighs> I don't know. If I end up doing it, and what I would almost certainly end up doing is flying, because I'm a pilot, and I know how to fly a goddamn airplane... I would need to take the perspective of, you know, this is a necessary evil, and we are the lesser of two evils here, and it's important that we defeat the greater of two evils, but one, without losing our own soul in the process, and two, remembering that they're human too, you know. One simple aspect is that if people surrender and become POWs, they are entitled to fair treatment under the Geneva Conventions, which is something that we have unfortunately not necessarily honored during my lifetime with things like Guantanamo Bay, but we need to do better. And another thing is just tactics and strategy, right? We cannot turn this into something like the Second World War, where we're just bombing cities to try to reduce industrial output. And I don't know. I will say, I've said this many times, but it is still something that pisses me off, right? It's like, during my whole life, if you're somebody that's like, you know, middle class or upper class or, you know, anything, but, you know, especially if you're somebody who has other socioeconomic options, who does not come from a military family, and you say, hey, you know, friends hey, mom and dad, I would like to join the military because I think that I could do a good job 
and have like a well-adjusted temperament and think through things and make a good contribution, they'll basically look at you like you're just dropping out of school and to be a lazy bum or something. It's like just the unbelievable lack of respect for that in this country has been ridiculous. I mean, I say this, I guess, because like, that's been the attitude of my friends and family every time I've thought about joining. They look at it as dirty and lowly and wrong. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, maybe we would have done a little bit better in places like Iraq and Afghanistan if we'd had, you know, a uh, like complete cross-section of our society there and we'd had all of the assets we needed I wouldn't have made the invasion of Iraq a good decision, but it could have made the occupation a hell of a lot better. I'm repeating myself a lot, but who cares? Like I said, when I freak out, <laughs> that's when things get worse, and it seems plausible that I'll end up having to join the military. Although now I just can but still, really, the reason I would do it is if we're at war. And I want it to be me that's at risk rather than some poor kid who doesn't understand what they're getting into. And I would rather be me that's making the decisions as an officer rather than some, like, you know, I don't know. Actually, we have a lot of good officers. I don't want to, I don't just a lot of good people in the military. I don't want to insult them by saying, like, better me than some, like, you know, over the top, like, you know, person who doesn't question anything. But it's more like we have a lot of people already who think things through, and we're going to need every single person like that we can get. And I'd be proud to be one of them. And uh, as absurd as it is to choose this branch, the few, the proud, the crayonating Marines seems like what I should do. Will it happen? I don't know. I hope and I pray it won't. There's some part of me that won't believe anything else is what's going to happen. And yeah, again, because China and India have a bunch of young men with nothing to lose. And I know what it's like to be that lonely and miserable. Although, admittedly, that's because of a combination of my own choices and being trans and not wanting to generate turf fuel. But nevertheless, and that's, and when I think about the fact that despite all my, you know, sort of education and, you know, information I have and better things that make me be like, yeah, war is hell, we should try to avoid it. Like, if despite all that, some part of me is like, I'm so miserable, I don't care, I almost wish for war. But then a, the rational part of me is still capable of being like, no, let's make decisions that try to avoid that. What about all the people that don't have all of that benefit? And who are in much worse situations? Do you think they're going to try to stop it? Hell no. They're going to push for it until it happens. And still, nobody seems to appreciate this. But again, by saying it's going to happen, maybe I'm preventing it. That requires being pretty superstitious, but what can I say? The other day I tried to measure, measuring device number 13 on a chip, and that was the device where the script I was using to run the measurement program just like crashed spontaneously for no reason. Worked on all the other devices before and after. So... What can I say? Superstition is real. Then again, so is the forces of good in the universe. So, despite all the horrors and evils, maybe there's something out there It's actually worth living for. Who knows? Not me. <laughs>